And joining me right now uh, for reaction and here to also talk about the threats that we're now facing in the world, uh, specifically North Korea, we have Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Hello, Trish. Hello. What did you think? I think it's noble when any president does this. I think President Trump handled this well. Yeah. And the one thing we all have to remember on Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day is that we cannot ever allow a nuclear Pearl Harbor to strike American cities. Yeah. I mean, and, and that brings us, of course, to the threat that we now face, Colonel, and that's North Korea. Where do you see this going? Well, it, uh, you know, as we've discussed many times, the clock is ticking. Every time you and I speak about it, Trish, we are closer to a military confrontation. Now, I don't want to overread the tea leaves because that happens in Washington too often. But just lately, the rhetoric in North Korea has, from North Korea has been changing a little bit, where they're saying a oh, war is inevitable, war is impossible to avoid, but we don't want a war. We don't, and that's a, that's a really dialing back a bit from Pyongyang. So there's many a test ahead, and of course we have to get through the Olympics. Indeed, um, which Russia will not be not be participating in now. We oh, know. Yeah, yeah the ban is uh, only 40 or 50 years too late. <laughs> you and I keep talking about China and its key in all this, but I've heard recently from some people that China may not entirely hold the key. That they may not have the intelligence to really um, throw their weight around there in North Korea. And you know, this is this is a different regime there. In, uh, in North Korea, and Kim Jong Un is different than his father. How do you characterize the differences? Well, the difference is that Kim Jong Un seems to be considerably more unstable, uh, unpredictable, and to have less a grip on on practical reality mm -hmm. than his father did. And his father was was a, was an extreme character, vicious and a, and a brutal killer. Mm -hmm. But there always was some dark logic behind what he did. I'm not sure that's always the case with Kim Jong-un. Why, Jong why are you not sure? Because let, let's, he probably sees it, Colonel Peters, as, you know, he loses his nukes, he loses all power. I mean, in his head, that's what he's thinking. Well, that may well be what he's thinking. I certainly think that he sees nukes as the, the key to being a, a player on the world stage. Um, and, sir, and it guarantees mm -hmm. the preservation of the regime. Right. But given his rhetoric, it's very, very hard to trust him um, with nuclear weapons or even conventional intercontinental mm -hmm. ballistic missiles. But the thing with China, you know, China actually may not have the full power mm -hmm. to, to bring this regime around. My point has always been that only China has a chance of bringing it around mm -hmm. because of its economic clout. Sure. But uh, if China can't do it, uh, then it's, it, it, you know, it's midnight. Well, you know, he's got to know it's midnight, though. I mean, he's, he's got to know that as well. You say he's entirely crazy. I mean, maybe that's the case. No, but he's no, got to, I, I mean, he's got to know, right? If he pushes us this far, he's gone. Well, one, I don't think he's entirely crazy. Uh, you don't have to be entirely crazy to do great damage. Hitler was not entirely crazy. Stalin was not entirely crazy. Um, but I, I think... Again, my no. worry has always, one of my worries always has been that Kim Jong-un may not have an objective grip yeah. on the strategic right. equation. Okay. Well, uh, I'll just differ with you on that. I, I do think Stalin and Hitler were entirely crazy. Anyway, sir, always good to see you, Colonel. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Colonel I don't Peters, mean they were everyone. good people. I, I know, I know. But it, it, there's something about if you, you, to me, they were clearly, clearly oh, crazy. Oh, they're maniacal.